from the FISA court to initiate electronic surveillance on Carter Page. Right. Um, it was not the sum total of that of that request for FISA authority. It was a. It was part of some of the information that was in that package, um, but not all of it. I have been many times misquoted uh, from closed testimony that I gave on the Hill. So it's easy to quote someone from testimony that's not been released. That's frustrating. Um, that we would not have gotten the FISA warrant without the Steele dossier. Uh, that is not and has never been my position. What I have said is it is impossible now, having sent the request in with the Steele dossier and all the other information about Carter Page, it is impossible for anyone to say, oh, could you have gotten it without that? Well, it was in there. I can't take it out retroactively. And Were there, though, it. in the dossier itself, in those 40 or whatever the number of, of paragraphs, that, uh, were there some good leads? Yes. Yes. There was a lot of information that we could not, uh, we could not disprove. There was a fair amount of information. A that lot, we, I want to repeat that. A lot of information that you could not disprove. That's right. There was a fair amount of information that we knew was accurate, but there are always questions with respect to timing. Right. Right. So when you get reporting from a source, uh, you have to determine, even if what the source is telling you is correct, you have to figure out, is there some other way he may have come across this information other than the way that he's representing? Hey, my, so, my reading of it, and tell <laughs> me if, if, if this seems right to you, and I spent a good deal of time with it, obviously, in, from the beginning, was that Steele didn't pretend that the information was definitive that rather they were from sources, and, and he was outside Russia himself, but he had That's old right. sources uh, from when he was inside Russia, that he could communicate with some of them outside, and some through intermediaries with people who were still inside. That's right. And there are varying levels of which there is both plausibility, perhaps accuracy, uh, and but that it's not, it was not intended to be a definitive document. You, you're absolutely it, right. Is, is that, that, it is raw source reporting. It's and the Steel, kind of thing you would do? It still presented it as such. It's the kind of thing we see often from sources. And St we knew that Steele was working a n number of different sources, some of which had sub-sources and sub-sub-sources, and he would represent that uh, in the reporting as any good source should. So it didn't come with his like imprimatur of this is all gospel. It was like, this is what I'm hearing. And that, that's how good sources report. Um, a lot of the information, some of the information uh, was consistent with reporting we were getting from other sources. So that's always to his credit. Steele had a history of, um, of good reporting to us. He had provided information on other cases, cases about like, Russian organized crime issues and other issues. Um, information that was judged to be so accurate that it was used in things like arrest warrants and indictments. So he had a very solid track record and provided this information with, uh, you know, accurately describing right. some of it he, you know, he thought was pretty solid. Others he yeah. made clear like, hey, I'm getting this from one person and I can't vouch for the, source, the sourcing chain and I'm just giving it to you for your information.